Well, uh, again, from the point of view of the antagonist in, in determining something or other which is already going to be uh, taken for granted, uh, the Scotland tragedy and the ongoing tragedy um, has some history to it, and the history is apparently um, negated by those who, who will follow the track of the bacteria as the, as the, as the, the culprit <laughs> we all know to be an absolute foolish thing to, to, to say in, in any way otherwise. Um, uh, and it was so clear, however, to to the in the time of the Legionnaires outbreak, the first one, and over the years, having having looked back on the times that you would see an article in the newspaper about people who were were sick from being incarcerated in on a cruise ship for a, a while. And knowing that the old type of Freon uh, is, is apparently a culprit in um, the development of, of, of a, uh, the, the, the nature of this uh, phosgene gas theory, um, it, it's, it's compelling to, to go back and look at uh, what one, one person, your, uh, Lieutenant Commander um, Levangi, which I mentioned before in, in part of this interview, a part of this uh, um, uh, review of the original Legionnaires disease, what what he came to conclude, and 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 these are used in the hearings in 1977, not by not by uh, um, uh, Lieutenant. Uh, Commander Lavangi, but by a testimony given before uh, the United States Congress uh, committee or subcommittee, and uh, there was there was a definite um, connection between the um, the refrigerant uh, process, the Freon eleven, um, which has a technical name and. There's no question about it. The, the tobacco industry, as it uses the G13 process, um, which was, was originally developed in the 1960s, early 60s, um, and the process which goes on has expanded tobacco uh, is, is part of uh, part of the issue. Um, yet it. it it is it is so compelling to 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 realize that Lavangi's concept, not only when it was submitted as a petition for the um, the uh, welfare and and health uh, uh, people in the United States, um, the petition listed um, this as a as a, um, as a is a useful tool, and uh, and gave them specific some specific indications of how it comes about under military chemical warfare um, uh, as a chemical, uh, and uh, it was accepted to a certain extent as as not only possible but probable, but. I don't know if it's useful for anyone to change what was basically uh, um, a, a, a fraud and, um, by the CDC in 1976 and, and come up with anything other than a conclusion that, oh, it's still a mystery. You know, it's going to be a mystery forever. Well, I, I, I urge you to look at the documentation. Uh, Phosgene uh, is exactly what the, the people who were looking at this um, apparently came to conclude uh, could have been the cause of the original Legionnaire's disease. And, and why we have these small um, outbreaks is, is apparently um, 
you know, it's it's not a, a great mystery. Um, uh, why was Philadelphia the first place? Why why was this closed in? Well, I've mentioned that that there could have been a number of of, of real problems for certainly the tobacco industry and in the in the process. Um, uh, in 1976, the liberation of the Freon and the environment. Well, the question exists, is it still going on? I mean, obviously, if you're making expanded tobacco and you're liberating this into the environment, nobody wants to really know about this. Uh, it does have something to do with the ozone layer depletion. Uh, and it does have something to do with who might and might not um, be getting a, 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 a dose of um, uh, the what's called the Legionnaire's disease. This is this is a form of lung disease, of course. It's the same thing as mustard gas. No question about that. that that's a, that's a reality. The treatment is is also a reality. If people who came out of the trenches during World War One uh, could survive, they they were surviving because of the, the not only the exposure level, but how far away they were from from the actual um, the component of the uh, gas, phosgene gas, or or if they were in the trenches or down underneath or closer um, to where the um, the gas was. Uh, going in which direction sometimes it would go in the wrong direction um well what uh, what i think is very very uh clear to me is that there's still no questions there, you know, the people who are talking about this in, in scotland are talking about the bacteria sherry and and that's settled that's absolutely settled the people who are talking about this in california the, uh, the medical schools are still saying oh it's settled there's no question about it i'm saying it's not settled i'm saying you have a problem and i'm asking you know basically do you like the idea that you've been fooled for all these years do you just want to perpetuate the same myth or you want to look into it. There's some paperwork out there. It's it's available. I mean, and you can find it. Uh, University of California in San Francisco has um, has did purloin through Don Barrett, um, Mr. Butts, uh, purloined a, a, a number of, of documents which were made into uh, a book. Uh, by Stanton Glantz, and uh, there is one brief reference to this Legionnaire's disease, but it doesn't seem to be compellingly interesting. Um, and then the AMA, it was made available to the AMA to the same source, Don Barry, Mr. Butts, um, in 1994. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, the 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 entire um, the entire uh, work which I, I had written in 1992 was made available um, to uh, the same people and I think under the conditions of, of the fact that it was uh, part of its public, public property in, in one way or other the, the ideas were, were certainly meritorious enough where so that the um, the tobacco industry especially Brown and Williamson could make comments and and could could understand that this was a serious issue this was certainly serious and they certainly didn't want any of this to ever get out well having gotten out uh, so to speak um, it's been so many years from 1976 to 1994 uh, 20 years or so to develop and uh, to continue uh, the uh, the myth that this is a bacterial uh, problem which was uh, set into motion by uh, the cdc's final verdict on this and turn down uh, the people who were actually seriously involved with um, with implicating uh, um, the Freon 
which has escaped gas from uh, um, a, an air conditioning system. In, in this case, in the Philadelphia um, case, the, uh, the the evidence was was certainly very strong, and and so we have people talking in Scotland about cooling towers, and uh, the remarkable the remarkable. <laughs> Uh, thing about this is they're saying, oh, well, you know, these things just, these events, these Legionnaire events just occur once in a while and maybe maybe have some 500 out there in a, in, a, in a year in one place and maybe have 200, maybe got two people or whatever. Nobody really knows. And of course, even even if you watch Dr. House, uh, um, the reruns of House, you, you come to the conclusion that that it's a valid and it's it's been validated by the medical uh, the medical people that that that's the only that's the only way you come to that um, disease. The interesting thing is is so very infrequent, and you find it under the same conditions. The environment is. Uh, is perfectly acceptable under the terms of the, the, the same thing that happened in Philadelphia. And, uh, and yet you have the specialists, uh, these people talking uh, about um, what, what it really is. It's a bacterial problem. It, it, it just comes, they even show you the bacteria. This is what is so different from the other bacteria. It's not a bacteria. It's not a waterborne bacteria. It has to have something in it. And that is the liberated or the broken or the, the, the somehow phosgene of the kind of uh, gas that was used in World War One, you have to have this this element, the freon, the the the, um, the the chemical as a part of this, and of course you're implicating the tobacco industry, and, and there's no question you are. I'm interested in in another thing, perhaps, perhaps because of these. Um, uh, the fact that they they may be still um, doing uh, expanded tobacco processing, and that means that they're simply liberating or freezing, freeze drying and freezing, and and making a sheet of tobacco and then cutting it up. And if this is still going on, they're liberating the freon into the environment the same way. And so let's look in that direction. Uh, this is perhaps a new thought, but if you're going to ignore it, and you're going to be an activist, and you're going to you're going to simply say, "Oh, well, we 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 simply don't have to worry about this," uh, and and in 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 terms of what it really is, uh, this is a challenge to the people who are out there beating the drums for uh, activism and truth and and finding it. Listen, uh, there were people who in 1976, uh, 1976 in the summer, who simply would not accept the Petri dish uh, explanation. And they were very adamant about it. And yet they were rushed away. Their lives were threatened, some. Dr. Levang, uh, Mr. Levangi, uh, Lieutenant Commander Levangi, and one Canadian doctor who, who simply had to be uh, uh, put away somewhere and was so humiliated that, and, and the hearings in 1977, it, it's amazing to me. I, I, you know, I, I've kept this in my mind and I wanted to break it. At some point, because I could see how Legionnaires was only infrequent once in a while, and and the reasoning uh, that that people would come to, well, the bacteria only appears every once in a while, and, and we don't really know why. Well, I know why, and, and the paperwork's there. You just have to look at it. Why don't you look for it? Go to the the source. I mean, they've been keeping all these records, these documents. Uh, they have the documents, and and they're online. So go look. 
that's one way to find out. And it's called phosgene gas.